Hello everyone and welcome to Clarksville's Political Forum. I'm Van Stokes, your moderator for today's session. And on behalf of Leadership Clarksville and the Clarksville Area of Chamber of Commerce, we're glad that you could be with us today. This forum is coming to you from the facilities of the Mass Communications Department here on the campus of Austin Peay State University. And it's intended for you, the viewers and the voters, to have an informed choice when you go to the polls to vote. Today we have the opportunity to meet and greet and hear from the candidates who will be on the ballot for the county commission representing district number 13. They are to my left, Ms. Audrey Mallory Tooley and Mr. Walker Woodruff. In a moment, they're gonna each have two minutes in which to present opening comments to us today. Following their opening remarks, we will turn to our panelists for questions. Joining us once again on my right are our panelists, the business, right, business editor and county government writer for the Leaf Chronicle, Mr. Jimmy Settle. From Five Star Radio and Clarksville Now, Mr. Lee Irwin. And the executive director of Progressions and the president-elect of Civitan International, Mr. J. Alberto. Each candidate will be given one minute to respond to each question in a rotating order. And at the conclusion of the questioning, each candidate will have two minutes in which to provide closing statements. The closing statements will come in reverse order from the introductory remarks. Our timekeeper for the session is Ms. Lacey Groves. County commissioners are voted into office for four-year terms, and they are elected by voters in their respective districts. The county commission meets twice monthly to discuss and vote on a variety of resolutions, including county government policy, the county budget, the school system budget, and property tax rates, just to name a few. County commissioners serve on various committees which are devoted to specific departments or specific subject areas. And they range every, everywhere from the county jail to animal control. Well, let's go to our candidates for their opening remarks. Let's begin, if we can, with Ms. Audrey Tooley. Hello, everyone. I am Audrey Mallory Tooley. I am Audrey Mallory Tooley, and I am running for the county commissioner for District 13. I am a proud, I am very proud to live in this county and this city and the District 13. I am dedicated to this community. I like to say that my parents have lived in District 13 all their lives, and I feel as I need to give back to the community. I now live in District 13, and I like to say there is no place like home. I left, I came back, and I'm ready to give back. Uh, there are a lot of issues that are out there for, to, for us to address. I hope to bring new perspective to old issues. This is my home. I want you to know that I am dedicated and committed to District 13, but not only to District 13, but to the county and all. I like to say that for 34 years, Ms. Letty Kendall has taken District 13 very far. Now, I want to take it even farther. We are committed to the, to the task ahead. I will give 101%. I just want to take this opportunity for you to listen to this and, and make the right choice. I am a native Clarksvillian. I've been through your school system. I want to say the paper didn't reflect everything I have done in the past. You know, I do have an MBA in business. In 26 weeks, I will graduate. Consider that. I have a lot of education. Let me use that. Thank you. And thank you. Next, we'll have opening comments from Mr. Walker Woodruff. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Austin P., for this forum. I thank you for this opportunity. I'm here running for the county commissioner seat for District 13. I have lived in this community off and on for the last 40 years, back from 1973 until today. I have watched the District 13 advance some, but not fast enough. One of my issues is I have a problem with is people getting killed. 
I can't stand by and watch people getting, ran, getting run over in a community that tax dollars are good places than in this community. We've got to fix that. I can't stand by and watch a landfill that is filling up by the day. We are in an urban sprawl. We've got to fix that. There are a lot of issues that, that plague Clarksville. Everything from infrastructure to jobs to home invasions, security, a lot of issues with the sheriff's department for its financing the budget, the school system. I have a vision, I have a vision in the future that we're gonna to come to and we have to revisit the area of consolidated government. It has to come. We cannot move forward if we don't come to a conclusion. There's no reason, no, I can't understand why we have a separate government for one metropolitan city, and that's where we're moving to. Give me an opportunity to, to serve Clarksville in the District 13 Commission. Thank you very much for those opening comments. Let's turn to our panelists now. Our first question will come from Mr. Jimmy Settle, and it will go to Ms. Tooley. Thank you. Ms. Tooley, please, if you will, pinpoint and describe those aspects of your uh, personal and professional leadership that, that you feel uniquely qualify you for a seat on the Montgomery County Commission. Um, I would say um, my position as an administrative assistant where I work now with the state government, um, I have taken many roles uh, advancing in leadership positions, um, taking the first step in initiating projects um, to better I work with the Department of Health, so taking on leadership positions and uh, doing paperwork or so forth, even in, in my church, taking on leaderships. Um, I think it is important to take leadership positions. I've never been a follower. I've always been a leader. I think uh, people, uh, we are, I think you are born to be a leader in most senses. And, and when you see something that needs to be done, it's up to me. I feel like it's up to me to take on that position and take the forerun of it and uh, start the, the process of getting people in position to take on that task. Whatever the task is, I'm going to step up and do it. Thank you very much, Mr. Woodruff. Throughout my career, I was the Army Sergeant, Sergeant First Class in the United States Army for 20 years. I've always been in a leadership position. I've taken people on mission on drug task force. I've always been in that position. Currently, I'm the Vice President of the Cumberland River, South Kentucky, Middle Tennessee Baptist District Association Brotherhood. I'm the Vice President. In his absence, I carry on all of the duties that have to be performed in that, that capacity. I started a company called New South Gateway Tours and Travel. People follow me because they blame my abilities and my, my aptitude for getting the task done. I'm not, a, I'm not a sit back guy. I'm the type of guy that you come to me with a, with, a, a decision, with a decision that has to be made, I'll make the right decision right then and there. I won't fall in on the coattail uh, coat of some legend and make sure that, th that I don't have the time to call the legend to see if I'm making the right decision. I have to make that decision and call right then. That's what an effective leader is. Thank you very much. Let's go to our next panelist. For the next question, Mr. Lee Irwin, your question will go to Mr. Woodruff. Mr. Woodruff, uh, you mentioned in your opening statements about issues. So let's talk about what do you think are a couple of the top issues facing Montgomery County and how do you propose to deal with those issues? One of the issues, as I said, is I don't, we can't have people getting killed. If we're talking public safety, we can't have people, I understand the sheriff department issues with vehicles and security, but we're getting people killed in New Providence, and that shouldn't happen. Two things should happen. Either we need to build a catwalk over New Providence Boulevard, or we need to put some type of a signal to stop traffic so people can actually walk across and a wheelchair can actually get across the, the uh, highway. Uh, another issue is we have landlocked ourselves in the, in the, in the industrial park. We've got, to move, we've got to move towards acquiring different properties, land in other counties, taking our trash back, bailing our trash and taking that trash back there so our landfill don't fill up so fast. We've got wastewater issues. We've got water treatment issues. We're producing 28 million gallons of water a day now. We are treating 10 million gallons of water a day going out of the treatment plant. Those systems have to be upgraded. I understand some treatment has taken place, some upgrades have taken place, but not enough. Thank you very much. Ms. Tooley now. Um, I just want to address probably the top three that I feel as, as something that can be handled uh, within a time. 
Uh, one is education. Uh, once our children graduate from high school, what are their next steps? What can we do to get them to progress to the next level? And which I am uh, considering what uh, Governor Haslin had just initiated, which is the two-year program after uh, our high school kids uh, get out of high school and go on to college. That's something that he just signed, and I'm so hoping that's something that we can get them to continue to do. A uh, second issue that I'm in very, very interested in is the continuing drug operation in our areas, um, something that needs to be addressed, and also the gang issue within our areas, uh, especially in the New Providence area. Drugs and gangs are, to me, two of the t two uh, things that are uh, connected. Uh, if we can get some of the drugs out, maybe some of the gangs can go away. Thank uh, you. These are two of, oh, this is it. I'm sorry. You're fine. You're good. Our next question will come from Mr. J. Alberta, and it will go to Ms. Tooley. Ms. Tooley, uh, you both have talked about your major concerns for the community and even said some specifics for your, for your own uh, district. What do you think is the top priority in your district and what do you propose to do about it? Ooh, top priority probably would be drug related. Um, going back into our district, we have made great, great, great progress. Uh, for three years ago, uh, there was a lot of drug and prostitution in the New Providence area. And through the police precinct that just came into our area not long ago, we have seen major progress with that. But as of September, we have, I have just found out that that will be gone. And I do hope to, with some talk or with some kind of city something, we can keep that in that area. I hate to that goes away, what would happen uh, to our area if those police leave our area. I hate to see it come back to the point where it was years ago. Uh, so my concern is if that police precinct and activity center leaves, um, the condition in which it will go back to. So I would fight for that police precinct to stay in our area. Mr. Woodruff? We have to have a partnership, not only with Clarksville, the police department, but Montgomery County Sheriff Department to fight situations in our community. New Providence is not the only community I support. The Lincoln Homes area is an area of mine, and I just use that as a geographical region. Is I'm, I, li I don't live in that community, but I visit that community on a daily basis. My family used to live in that community. I'm not afraid to walk in that, com that community. I visit and knocked on doors, and senior people are just with the doors open. I don't have a problem with it. I, I know there's issues, but they don't plague this issue like people think that they are plaguing it. We have to have, again, a partnership between the, the Montgomery County Police Department and the Sheriff Department to continue service in these areas. Thank you. Mr. Jimmy Settle, you have the next question, and it will go to Mr. Woodruff for the first response. Thank you. Mr. Woodruff, clearly being part of being a county commissioner is, is being accountable to uh, constituents. Um, how do you propose to stay connected with the residents of your district to increase their involvement in the planning for the county's future if, if elected? I have a website, better yet, I am putting, sending information out through my emails and my Facebook account to all of the residents and constituents in my district, letting them know where I will be on the 17th of May of this year, between one and four o'clock. You will have an opportunity to, for me to, to ask me questions in reference education, environment, and public safety that is on the brink of uh, collapse in some other areas, but not mine. I think I have a great community. I think all of my constituents that I've talked to have issues that we're not able to solve today, but we will be working on those. Ms. Tooley. Um, we are, I am establishing uh, community walks, not only in my district, but in every district that I'm campaigning for. Uh, I have connected with a group of people in every district with business cards and flyers even if I win my campaign, we'd like to continue these walks. And these walks are to meet with the people of the district, not only New Providence. Yes, I know New Providence. I've lived there all my life. But I know people in Lincoln Homes. I know people district. I have people all over District 13. This is my district. 
uh, my, my, my whole intent is to always connect with District 13. Not only do I know the people of District 13, I know most of the pastors in District 13. And when you know the pastors and the churches in District 13, you have a connection with the people. So I do have a connection with the district. Thank you very much. Mr. Lee Irwin, your question goes to Ms. Tooley. Ms. Tooley, uh, let's talk about education for a moment. Of course, the Montgomery County Commission works closely with the uh, school system. Now, what would you offer as a way to help keep up with the continuing growth that's going on in the Clarksville Montgomery County school system? Now, we're already building schools. And one of my concerns is, uh, is after school care and pay increases for and um, I think what we need to do is find another way to, and my biggest thing is charter schools, and I, of course I work in Nashville, and we hear so much about charter schools and charter schools. Is it a possible something that we can do here in Clarksville? Is there another way? Uh, the school system is really growing. Uh, we, we're looking at Fort Campbell. Uh, they're bringing in more and more people. Um, I even looked online and there's a program Clarks was doing about what's going to happen in 2030. We're going to continue to grow and we're going to have to expand. I don't know about engineering. I don't know if we can expand the schools, the schools to the point of, of adding on to them to make it better. But I do know we're going to have to make some stands. Mr. Woodruff. The education lottery. I understand that bills have been passed but almost have been cheated out of some monies. My plan would be to go to the governor and ask him to where is the, the education money that was promised to us. That money should come down to the K, pre-K, and the elementary schools to prepare students for when they reach the 12th grade. That's what that money needs to know. Prepare them for the TCAP test, this common core testing that we're talking about. What is the difference between the two? We need to have a committee that can analyze that and tell us the difference so we can make sound judgments on the difference between TCAP and this common core that we're talking about. We need to tap into the private schools and find out what they are doing, what's so attractive to them, what is so attractive about private schools that we need to tap into that market and see what they have and we can implement those policies or not implement them. Thank you very much. Mr. G. Alberti, you have the next question and Mr. Woodruff, you have the first opportunity to respond. Mr. Woodruff, we, we, we talked about the school system, we've talked about, uh, both of you have mentioned crime in your, do you think, I, as a parent of uh, three children in, in the school age, in the school system right now, do you think we have enough activities for our kids and would you propose any more in your district? We do not have enough activities However, there are activities there, but we have to get involved. We have to make sure that, that our, our youth understand and know where those activities are. My son played football for, the, for four years at Kenwood High School and graduated with honors. Went on to the University of Memphis and graduated the top 3% of his class. He stayed in activities. There are a lot of activities in school that we, we can focus on. We just have to make our kids understand that's the best place for them to be. There are after school programs. There are great opportunities for after school programs, but we have to let our teachers and our kids and our families with, at the PTA meetings know where those activities are. What's gonna take place? Now we just opened up a new, open up a, uh, getting ready to open up a water park in, in the, one of my districts. And that's gonna provide a way, an outlet for some of those youth this summer. Ms. Tooley. Uh, when you say after school activity, we have to also think about uh, affordability, um, convenience, uh, can the parents get them there? Um, I would say yes to that. Uh, there need to be more activities available. Um, everybody don't have the convenience of uh, putting their child in football, basketball, or whatever it might be. I even, my son also went to Kenwood. Uh, he played basketball and so forth. But at that point when he went, I was the one that had to buy the basketball shoes. I was the one that had to buy this and that. Everybody can't afford that. Uh, can we not find something that they can do that the money is available for them to do it without the parent putting money? Uh, we need to come with a solution that a parent can put their child in something that will, will be easier for the parent to handle. Um, that would be my answer to that. 
Thank you. You're watching Clarksville's Political Forums. We're meeting with candidates for the county commission from district number 13. They are Ms. Audrey Mallory Tooley and Mr. Walker Woodruff. Let's continue our questions from our panelists. We go back to Jimmy Settle. Your question goes to Ms. Tooley. Ms. Tooley, staying with the education theme because uh, let's face it, it is by far the largest chunk of the county budget. Uh, you, and you actually alluded to this a moment ago. Um, w you know, we're confronted with building new schools at a rapid pace. Uh, we're, we're in fact about to build our 24th elementary school in this community, in this county, uh, to curb overcrowding. What is your stance on expanding schools we already have versus building more schools? Seems to be a common question I hear at the courthouse. Uh, and I'd like to know your thoughts on that, please. Um, if you can go back, that was one of my answers. Why can't we expand schools? Um, I do know we do have some very old schools that probably we cannot expand uh, only because of the age of the schools. Um, but I think that's something that needs to be addressed with, the, with some of the newer schools that were just built in the last five to ten years. Um, I think it would be more affordable to expand some of the schools as long as it would not uh, we're also getting to zoning and um, getting to uh, 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 overcrowding even in those areas. I would put that more on top of my list than building new schools. I think if the, the money is there more to do that, I think that's the way we should go. I have no problem with expanding I think it would be the, the best idea for us at this time. I, I think it would be the affordable thing to do and possibly it be more economical for us to do. Mr. Woodruff. I have watched more than 23, 24 elementary schools being built. I don't understand and don't know why we approve a school to be built, three schools to be built within three to four miles of each other. We should focus more on a level school, a one or two level, two or three level school. If we can build a building at Austin P, the Science Course building, for example, at three and four stories high, we can build a hospital with five stories high. We can build a, a two level school or three level school that we can house as a campus and, and, and provide space for our uh, administrative system, administrative building, and a campus at the same time. That eliminates space, it eliminates jobs, it don't eliminate jobs, but it creates jobs to maintain that facility. We should not be expanding or on a school that is already there. Thank you. And thank you. Mr. Lee Irwin, you have the next question, and it goes to Mr. Walker Woodruff. Mr. Woodruff, let's talk funding for a moment, and uh, funding is always a major concern of uh, most government entities. Now, in your opinion, are the county departments adequately funded? And if not, what are the needs that maybe are not being addressed? I have to look at the budget and I have to make an assessment on what are the needs versus what is wanted. Needs or what we have to have to sustain that department, such as, again, the sheriff department, such as the landfill that we've got to move in between five and another 20 years that we're going to have to move. Sounds like a long time, but it's just around the corner. We have to look at that. Uh, funding for control. We have to look at that. What do they need? Do they need another building or what do they want? Do they want more space just because it's there, just because this money is there? Those are issues that we have to look at seriously when it comes to budget crunching the numbers. So we have to think more about what is the need versus what is the want. Uh, yes, do we need 14 more, uh, 13 or 14 more sheriff department cars? We need a maintenance program to maintain those that can run, us, can run 175 to 200,000 miles. Yes, they are, it puts us in a crisis, but at the same time, we'll be able to take care of that later. Ms. Tooley. Now, um, as far as the budget, again, I agree with uh, Woodrow. Oh, uh, this has to be addressed. We have to look at this. Um, what needs to be cut? What needs to be, what, where the funds need to be allocated? Um, education to me is always at the top of the list. We can't go anywhere if we don't educate our children. Uh, cannot compete in this world without the proper education. That will always be one of the most important things on my list. Um, we have to address things of the what's important with, this, with the county roads and our buses, 
there's so much funding that needs to be out there, but we have to look at each one. And if I can't see that, I could not answer this question with the proper uh, information without knowing what we have already in our budget. So uh, I say I, it's at the, I can only say at this point, we should put education at the top of the budget. Thank you very much. We've heard from our candidates about the new Providence area, but not limited only to the new Providence area, but this entire district, district number 13. We've heard about public safety, land use, some educational issues, law enforcement issues, connections with the community, growth, roads. We have time for two more questions. Our next question from Mr. J. Alberta, and it will go to Ms. Audrey Tooley. Ms. Tooley, we, we've talked about uh, a lot of issues today, and let's talk about funding some of those issues. Our community's been blessed to uh, uh, have some influx of new growth, but what do you see as the role of the county commission playing in economic growth in our community? Economic growth. Ooh, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, excuse me. Well, economically, that's a good question. Uh, the county can only do so much as an economic growth. We have to get out there and to, to find economic, oh, Woodrow, I don't have a good answer for this one. I apologize. All right, we'll go to Mr. Woodruff. Again, as I stated, we have to have a partnership that is leaning more towards a metropolitan government to bring, to go out and find those jobs. We now, may not need to focus on the big fish, the hemlock plants, the, the Hanoke tire companies. We may need to focus more on the 500, 500 employee, four and 500 uh, job employees, bring those in. If we catch the big fish, then that's fine. But we, we need to focus more on that. We need to look at more land, acquiring more land in, in the surrounding counties because we have landlocked ourselves into the industrial park. We're going to build houses around it, and when you take the pipeline, a gas line, and send it for the south so we can supply those people, supply those businesses with gas, and only, not only that, but the entire city with gas. So we need to focus more on that. Uh, infrastructure, we do need more infrastructure, roads, bridges. We need a water plant that's going to sustain. Right now, I'm not sure we can, can, can sustain for the next 25 or 30 years. Wastewater plant, we need to upgrade that. We have done some up, but haven't done enough. Thank you very much, Mr. Jimmy Settle. You have the last question, and it goes to Mr. Woodruff. Thank you. Mr. Woodruff, the, the other side of this equation then becomes taxing people to pay for these types of things, and part of the County Commission's responsibility is setting that tax rate, that we're coming into the time of year, that controversial time of the year, where the County Commission is charged with doing that. Our current tax rate in this community, as, you, as I'm sure you're aware, is $3.14 per $100 assessed value. Uh, with all the departmental needs that are being expressed um, that have come before the County Budget Committee in the past couple of weeks, is it realistic to expect that that property tax rate can remain there for the foreseeable future? It is a difficult process. Taxation is a difficult process to go through. No one feels that they're getting the better end of it, of it. So today, I'm leaning more to, on, the, on the side of no taxes. However, if there's a tax increase, what would that tax rate be? What can we decide on to make that accountable for everyone? I think the county, county uh, have a responsibility there. We'll, for instance, we're taking, we're taking raw sewage from the county area, but we're treating it somewhere. There's a tax there. We don't have to tax out the, the current people that are being taxed today. There, there, there's an opportunity out there to bring those people on board, to give them water, give them sewage, give them fire protection, give them police protection so that we can generate some funds from that. I don't, I don't propose in ta taxing the, the, the current constituents anymore. Ms. Tooley? Um, I hate to say this, but I do believe in taxation. Um, not right now. I think tax, taxation is a part of our economic growth, which I did not, could not answer in the past. The only way we can continue to grow is to be taxed, uh, tax step by step. I'm not saying put a dollar onto the 314 now. Everything has a process, a slow progress. If we do this a small portion at a time, I think we can fund everything that needs to be 
funded by a small taxation at a time. We have not come this far by, by uh, reaching 314 at this point. It did not take us this far to get to 314 today. It took us years to get to 314, and it might take us years to get to $4. So taxation is important, but we can only take it step by step. Thank you very much. We've had a number of good questions from our panelists here today and also good responses from our candidates. It is now time to turn to our closing remarks. They will come in reverse order from our openings. They will each be no longer than two minutes in length. We will begin with closing comments from Mr. Walker Woodruff. As I stated earlier, a commissioner cannot expect to sail in on the coattails of a legend. We have to make decisions. I can't have a lifeline to a legend and expect to get an answer two days later. I need to, you need, the question needs to be answered now. If a fastball is coming to you, straight to your nose, you can't call the coach and ask him what to do in that situation. You gotta make a decision and you have to make it right then. You can't make a decision two or three days later. We have, we have an infrastructure that is, that is failing. Our roads are failing. Why should we, in this urban sprawl that we're in, we should be developing roads, not a two-lane road. We know that it's going in. It should be a four-lane road from the start. We have, a, we have a sewage system that's in trouble. We have a wastewater plant. That, we have a water plant that's degraded, but not to the capacity where it should be. We have a landfill that we've got to move. We're taking trash from all around the country. So there appears to be Fort Campbell, parts of, parts of uh, Christian County, Stewart County, Houston County, and all of Clarksville. The landfill is filling up faster than what you think it is. We're going to have to close it soon. We should be taking that back to the, we should be acquiring land back in that community, bailing that trash and taking it back there and, 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 and create jobs right there. We should have a, we should have an amusement park for our youth to go to in the summer, a water park. We need a zoo. We need a zoo that has lounge, tigers and bears and alligators. Something that we have, why do we need to go to Nashville Zoo? We can have all of that here. Uh, we, we need a, uh, we need all kinds of centers here. We need a convention center. That's, that's a, that, those are priorities, and those are, that is the vision that I have for Clarksville and Montgomery County in this commission. I want to make sure that you're getting the best candidate based on my answer today, based on the question that's proposed to me, best candidate. Thank you very much. And next, we will hear closing comments from Ms. Audrey Mallory Tooley. I feel like I gave you the best answers I could. I didn't say I know everything, but I'm capable to learn and to find out what I don't know to present a better answer in the future. I'm not riding on anybody's coattail. Yes, I know Letty Kendall. I've known her for a long time. She's a good woman. She's a dedicated woman and very committed to District 13. I call her sometimes and we talk about the things, the progress, the issues that address our district but I'm not relying on her to run the district if I'm voted in. I'm a different type of person, my own mind up. I have a way of doing things my way. I love my district. I wouldn't have never returned to the district if I didn't. All I can say is give me a chance. I'm for the people. I'm, I, I'm the voice for the people. I'm the eyes to see what's going on, and I'm the ears to hear what's, what people are saying for the district. What can I say to make you vote for me? I'm here for you. That's what I can say. I am here for you. I am dedicated. I'm committed. I can't promise you a zoo. I can't promise you anything. There are laws already mandated. There are things I can't change. They're already there in place. I can listen. I can tell you what's going on. Yes, vote for the person, and that would be me. Thank you. And I want to say thank you, uh, Ms. Tooley and Mr. Woodruff. Thank you very, very much for sharing your time and your thoughts with, with us here today and for taking part in Clarksville's political forum. And more than that, I want to say thank you to each one of you for being willing to serve this community of ours if you are truly elected to this position. Thank you. 
Also want to say thank you to our panelists for bringing forward the issues today and then posing the questions in a very good way today. Thank you very much to each one of our panelists. And to those of you at home who are watching, I would like to remind you, do not forget August the 7th. August the 7th is the state primary and county general election day. Now, early voting starts on July the 18th and runs through August the 2nd. That is early voting. You can go down to the Montgomery County Election Commission at Montgomery Veterans Plaza. They're located at 350 Pageant Lane to participate in early voting or on August the 7th, either way. Once again, I want to say thank you to the Mass Communications Department here on the campus of Austin P. State University. And also thanks to your Clarksville Area Chamber of Commerce, as well as Leadership Clarksville for making this forum possible. Until next, until next time, I'm Van Stokes saying so long, everyone.